This is my childhood home and my parents live here. After I finished college, I started working as a teacher in San Francisco, but couldn't afford rent. And I decided to build a yom in my parents' backyard. Pretty much all single family homes around here have like a good size, this is called like a San Francisco lot backyard. There was just dead grass here my whole life. We really didn't use it. It was a very underutilized space. My long-term goal was figuring out how to get land and live off the grid. And so the Yom felt like a really good temporary solution to house myself in the city. But then since it's portable, I can disassemble it and move it when I get my land. Watch your head. It's a really small door. <laughs> It's actually surprisingly big. It feels like you have this tiny, it feels like you have a tiny space back here and, and then you come in and it's like, wow. wow kind of opens two, up. Yeah, yeah, two stories. Yeah, I think it's the height of it really helps. And you know, it's just, it's just one, it's like a giant bedroom basically. Like I've, you know, it's bigger than a lot of people's bedrooms. So if you think of it as just one room, it's pretty spacious. <laughs> What is a yom anyway? So yeah, a yom is, it's a hybrid between a yurt and a geodesic dome. So it has geodesic frames for the walls. So these triangle wood beams are geodesic, but then it has a yurt pitched roof with a skylight at the top, which is more like a contemporary yurt. And then it has the canvas walls of a yurt. I liked the yom because well, I had stayed in one and I had never heard of a yom before, but I really liked it and I really like triangles <laughs> and I just, I think geodesic structures are really brilliant. And I had just read like, oh, they're like more structurally sound than a yurt, which is kind of just like a, like a weak fence type thing structures. Yeah. And then I just saw this for sale on Craigslist. I bought it from a family who was living in it with their baby. I got a loan. I call it a yom loan, but it, it was just like a loan of $10,000. So I went there, disassembled it, came back there with a the truck, picked up all the pieces, brought it back here. When I was thinking about putting the yom here, I knew the measurements were like 16 feet across. I came out here with the tape measure. I was like, it just barely fits. And once the foundation was set, I was like, this pretty much takes up the whole yard. <laughs> so, And your parents don't mind. They don't because they never used the space back here. And they were very happy to have me closer to them. The foundation of the Yom are these pier blocks that you can just get at the store and then these four by four posts. The trickiest part was leveling the foundation. You just kind of push dirt around till it's all level. <laughs> the wonky stairs I built myself. It was like one of my first DIY projects. They work, you know. Yeah. And then I set up my little grill here because I sometimes just use it to make dinner back here. I didn't have my own kitchen or bathroom back here. I just use my parents, the main house. But it is kind of nice to have like your own little cooking spot. Watch your head. Okay. <laughs> so this is a septagon, actually. Okay. It has seven sides. Okay. So um, when I first moved in, I had my bed just right here, and it took up pretty much the whole space. And I was like, man, it would be really nice if I had like kind of a living room area. So I had this idea to loft my bed. And also, what ended up happening was it was way warmer to sleep at night up there. So yeah, this was like one of, also one of my first DIY building projects. And I had to make it freestanding and like this weird trapezoid shape um, <laughs> to like fit into the septagon. It was definitely a challenge for me being like not a builder. So I have these posts and the platform and these supports down here and the cross beams for structural 
stuff. And then a ladder, and that's pretty much it. And it's really, yom life is really conducive to like if you're short, <laughs> but like my boyfriend's really tall. So he kind of has trouble in here because everything's really short and you can like bump your head on everything. But I'm a small person, so I really like small spaces. I like feel really comfortable in them. So I like having this little nook to sleep in. Just can like read up here at night. And um, we also would put like a, sh a sheet and then project movies on that wall. How much space do you have up there? Can you sit up or? Yeah. So I can sit up. My head is like in the highest part. Where my feet are in the bed, there's like very little space because <laughs> it like slants down. The other thing about sleeping up here is you make a lot of spider friends. <laughs> it's just part of the deal here. Really? Do you oh, make, yeah, you yeah see... up in the skylight, they really love it. They love all the like corners of the beams and <laughs> you learn to coexist with them. I usually sleep like all curled up though, so um, this is, yep, this yeah. is it. Wow, you can't actually fit your feet, no? Well, I mean, but... like kind of, yeah. How do you just fit? I, I just barely fit. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool because you can see the green. Yeah. yeah, so this is, the green is the um, roof fabric and this is foil insulation inside and so the green showing part is where the foil insulation has like slipped oh. and is like not quite filling yeah. in that area so it would be a lot brighter in here if i didn't have insulation because light would be coming through okay. Okay. all of the roof but i i needed the insulation for warmth so i put that and then i made this like giant white fabric because the people who had it before just like lived in a foil spaceship and like had it exposed and I was like, I can't do that. So my mom helped me sew this giant piece of fabric that fit the shape. Like it's a bunch of triangles sewed together basically. Okay. And the bottom's not insulated, it's just the top. The floor is insulated okay. with those foam pieces. It was like a jigsaw puzzle to get the floor put together. So you can see the individual plywood pieces that were sort of jigsaw puzzled together to make this septagon shape. <laughs> we had kind of a map from the previous owners of like, this is how the pieces go together. They like labeled them, but that was actually the hardest part um, with disassembly and reassembly because I think they're called tongue and groove plywood where they like kind of snap together. But there's like a very specific order that the pieces have to be put together in. So it's like you kind of have to troubleshoot for a while till you get the right order. So that was yeah. tricky, but we did it. And then once we had the foundation and the floor up, that took the longest. And then the structure came up in one day and the canvas came up in one day. So yeah, there's these wood beams. They're only two by two or something. They're not very big. And they're all connected by these bolts. And then the roof also has um, like this tension wire. But yeah, everything connects with those big bolts in sort of a star. And then the canvas just drapes over the whole thing. And it has like a waterproof roof and the roof rafters connect up at the skylight is like the main hub um, where they all connect so yeah it's like just some wood and some bolts and some canvas basically <laughs> it it's pretty enough? simple is it enough because you know this is pretty thin for right it's not really enough it gets pretty cold in here my original plan was to have a, a wood burning stove hidden behind this shelf is a place in the canvas for the exhaust of a stove to go through. And I had one set up, but it wasn't working properly. So after troubleshooting it for a while, I gave up on it and it's now sitting in the backyard. <laughs> I have another pellet stove in the garage yeah. that I would like to install here. Cause the one time I did get it to work, it heated up the space so quickly because okay. it's so such a small space. The Yom came with uh, four, four windows that are just built into the canvas and it has this screen on it and then there is a plastic window covering so that you can have it closed but still it's like velcro, velcroed on. 
And then there's these roll down canvas pieces for when you want to close the window, but you have to go outside and unclip it and like zip them up. I leave it open when it's nice out, which is not that often. I usually have the plastic on. The canvas has weathered a lot. You're supposed to replace it every five years, maybe. It's kind of due for a replace, at least like a power wash or something. And then, so you have electric, obviously. Tell me, uh, how does that work? <laughs> yes, um, so I run electricity from the house. So um, I'm able to run a electric okay. heater. Everything else is pretty minimal electricity wise, just a couple lights and I'm a musician. So I can listen to records in here, which is like, and can practice music in here. I have some practice wow. amps wow. and yeah, stereo system. So can power all yeah. of that easily. And you have a bit of water and just something. Yes. It's not filled right now, yeah. but I keep this filled and I just like brush my teeth on the deck mm -hmm. and great. then, you know, get dressed right here. Do you have minimal clothes normally? No. I. So, yeah, one of the challenges of living here is that I'm like a maximalist who likes stuff a lot. Um, and I really like clothes and I just, yeah, I have a lot. Of, i an artist, so I collect stuff. So it was a constant challenge to like try to keep things not cluttered. I might be self-absorbed I might forget the world sometimes But then I miss him I Living here makes me, it gives me like a peaceful state of mind um, where I feel like I am separated from all the noise of the city and all the chaos. Out in the garden of my mind, I see and it feels like a real retreat that I can just be here. It also has shaped a lot of my art making. Let me walk you home in the fog, in the rain. The a lot of that came from just living in a way that was a little bit more connected to the seasons and the environment. You're like one step closer to being outside. It's just that much easier. Like there's just less of a barrier to being outside and feeling connected with nature or the world. Out in the garden of my mind. It's a thin layer, that, you know, right? It's a very, like, literally a thin barrier, yeah. <laughs> like basically camping in here. I would also love to show you yeah, my outdoor perfect. shower. Perfect. So, partially because I'm a surfer and also just because having my own shower space and I love outdoor showers. I wanted to build an outdoor shower back here. So there was this little alleyway that was just storing a bunch of junk basically. So I built a little shower back here and it uses an instant hot water heater, like a, a camp Lux and propane. Yeah, you can take showers. So and then, you lined it where you needed it. Yes, okay, we know. lined it just so that um, to minimize like water like rotting just to keep things flowing down down the <laughs> slope we got to use the natural gravity of the slope here and we built this out of pallets and like just old wood from the local like scrapyard and then got some rocks for drainage and then it all just kind of drains into my garden I planted some like mint and herbs like water loving stuff for the shower to soak up the water and can easily wash off my wetsuit back here without like bringing sand into the house and stuff. We just installed some copper piping. They're a little bit hidden. Okay, yeah. I, I kind of hid them, but so um, you put the, you actually know how to do that? Yeah, I I have friends that <laughs> are builders and they helped me and advised me. Yeah, and then we just installed like a kind of roof structure for privacy. And then this is also like a curtain 
rod if I ever wanted like to install a curtain for privacy, yeah. which I never really you felt never, like I needed to. So you didn't worry about the neighbors? I didn't, I didn't worry about the neighbors, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no windows, I mean. Yeah, <laughs> there, yeah, I, the windows were up there, so that's why we put that, and then no one ever comes back here on the other side, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you can see the patches on the roof. That was the previous owners patched it up. They did a little patch up job. We've never had a leak. So that's like a big question I get. I'm like, like when it rains, what happens? I'm like, it just rains. And then the rain is really loud in there. It's like when you're camping in a tent. So you can see where the, there's like the canvas wall yeah. piece and that is tied onto the wood beam. Okay. And then there's the roof piece, which overhangs yeah, that. Yeah, you can see that. So it's a little bit permeable, but because of the overhang, it's, yeah, yeah it's yeah. waterproof. It sounds, the rain is really loud in there. It's like when you're camping in a tent. It's still like, you can see the walls kind of moving in the wind and it does get really windy here and the walls will just like shake really violently and it, it's pretty dramatic. <laughs> Especially when this lamp like is like kind of swinging when it's like really windy or if it's like raining and then it's kind of dark and then this light's just like swinging around, you feel like you're in a boat. <laughs> I remember the first night I slept in it I could hear everything, like all the motorcycles on the street at night. And like, I was like, I've made a terrible mistake. I couldn't sleep at all. And then the second night I slept totally fine. You just get used to your situation so quickly and it doesn't feel like you're limited. Do your neighbors know that you're living here or do they think it's a party tent? <laughs> My immediate next door neighbors know and they're fine with it. I kind of live in a place where, you know, as long as you're not disturbing anyone, no one like cares what you're really doing in your own home. So that's nice. Maybe not plugged in. <laughs> I'm really lucky to have grown up here and my parents bought this house a long time ago before things got really expensive. It's impossible to buy a place here, even renting a place that's affordable for, you know, my friends who are in bands and, you know, work in restaurants or I'm, I'm a teacher. It's just there's no way to get that kind of home space unless you are creative. I might be self-absorbed. I might forget. So this felt like the best option for me to be able to live in the city and not be driven crazy by <laughs> city life. Because of the housing crisis here, I've never been able to have my own place. And this is like definitely the closest that I could get to that. It really is like so important for my mental health and for, yeah, just like feeling good and happy and yeah, and just feel connected with my roots here and my parents who I'm close with. Nice. I actually wow, wrote awesome. that, I wrote that right here. 